Yeah, hello and welcome to our web webinar with the topic metering and KNX. Hello from Heidelberg in Germany. Um, yeah, my name is Thorsten, Thorsten Reibel. I will guide you today through this webinar uh, with the topic metering and KNX. And yeah, what will be our agenda for today? Um, we will talk about some solutions and applications around metering. First of all, before I come then to the overview of our um, ABB energy meters we have, the A, B and C series which can be connected via this meter interface uh, to KNX, um, just let me explain a bit, and then followed by yeah, the energy actuator and energy module, which are direct KNX connected yeah, measuring components, and I will explain this as well. And finally, yeah, a small example of a visualization and um, a dedicated ETS project to visualize also solutions around, uh, um, around metering. Yeah, the webinar will take around one hour, as always. And if you want, you can give me some questions uh, on the chat. Um, I try to answer these uh, questions later on after the webinar directly. If not possible, um, I will give you an answer in my uh, feedback email, which comes all the time, which includes um, the presentation I will give to you, but also the recorded file of the webinar. Um, yeah, there's also at the end, uh, a small questionnaire with some questions around the topic we have done today. So please answer these questions um, in order to complete the webinar. Um, if you're not able to do this uh, directly after the webinar, we will send you also a reminder and then you can uh, answer this as well a bit later. Normally, Jürgen, my colleague Jürgen, Jürgen Schilder and myself, we share this webinar, uh, but Jürgen is today not in Heidelberg. So I will do it alone today and you have to listen all the time to me today. Yeah, in order to improve the performance of the system, uh, allow me to switch off the video. I would start right now. So metering and KNX is the topic. If you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. This, let me say, important statement of a famous physician, uh, physician Lord Kelvin, is absolutely true and also valid for us. Our target is to measure something, but not only to measure, we would like to improve also something out of this measurement. Yeah? And um, you see here on the left already some components uh, we have in our uh, range to do or to, to, to handle something around metering. And um, as we as ABB deal with electrical components, of course, we talk about electrical measurement, which is kilowatt hours, but also some, some electrical values like power, like voltage, uh, current, or frequency. Um, these are important things in the building, has to do with some, some uh, electrical loads, but there are also some other consumption in the building. Think about water, think about uh, heated or cooled water for heating and cooling solution, uh, think about uh, gas you might need for heating. Um, not directly our topic in ABB, but you will see later on, we have also a chance uh, to connect meters out of this uh, to our complete solution. There are some options, but let me do this at the end of the session. Maybe now. So our topic now, electrical metering, first of all, and uh, of course, solutions also behind. So what do we do? Um, one topic is measuring of energy consumption, means uh, kilowatt hours, uh, yeah, used energy in the building for any um, electrical appliances. And um, what do we do with our uh, LED meters? We do sub-metering. So our target is not the main meter, the utility meter um, in the building, uh, um, measuring the energy coming from the energy supplier, but we are talking about submetering. Can be in a building, can be in an apartment, department of the building, or in, in a dedicated area, down to an electrical circuit, individual circuit if we want. So that's possible as well. And our target is to measure, to have, for example, transparency in our energy consumption in the building, you can compare, of course, energy consumption. Maybe similar departments have different energy consumption. You can check what is going on there. Maybe to detect energy thieves. So if you see something is going wrong in, in one part of your building, due to any reason, you can react on this. And of course, the target is to optimize our energy consumption, yeah, which has to do with costs all the time. Energy costs money. and. Uh, costs for energy will, will uh, increase in the next years for sure. And another topic is to allocate costs. If I create submetering, it's possible to say, okay, in this department, this amount of energy is consumed. 
which costs this amount of money. And uh, so it's a fair splitting of costs possible. We distribute the cost to the users in the building and maybe also possible to create an incentive for cost saving. Yeah, so to motivate the people to, to um, use less energy. So these are all the topics around energy consumption measurement, kilowatt hours we measure normally. Um, you see here, yeah, already something visualized. So this is here from our factory. Some, yeah, dedicated circuits. You see here compressors, also the kitchen will be measured. So the consumed energy in these areas will be visualized here. Maybe per, per day, per week, or the yearly consumption, all these things are possible. You can compare, you can check if something is going wrong, and maybe you can react from this. So measurement, of course, is necessary, but also displaying visualization is necessary to make it transparent for the user. Another topic is measurement of power. Yeah? So um, the load behind, how much uh, power does it mean? Uh, mainly for, for load management. What does it mean? Um, in some cases, you would like to avoid load peaks. So if you have all loads switched on at the same time, you will have a load peak. Um, you have to pay for sometimes, depending on your energy supplier, on your contract, for short, but high load peaks you have to pay. And of course, it's your target to avoid such a situation. Yeah? On other situations, sometimes you have only a limited power available. Yeah? So if you overshoot this level, um, the power will be cut off completely. That might happen in some regions, some countries, we see the situation. So of course, then your building is completely dark, not working anymore. And your target is to, to manage this before you reach, of course, this um, power limit. And um, we call it load management or load control. Later on with these energy actuator, energy module, we see already a small solution we have integrated in our um, components. But this measurement of loads of, uh, of power in your, your building and a superior load management solution, maybe you can create also such solutions. Yeah, then another topic is this, yeah, maybe you have heard of this already, the smart grid item, you find more and more in the discussion. Smart grid is a big item, let's say, uh, in, in short words, it means um, intelligent power network from power generation down to the building, down to the individual circuit. Yeah, and um, we would like to manage all these power generation, power consumptions the intelligent way. Yeah, so there is a complete interaction maybe available or possible in such a solution. At the moment, it's more vision. Yeah? It's not reality all over the world, for sure not. And some smaller projects already existing, but um, if you have such a solution with sub-metering, maybe down to the circuit, we are prepared for such a solution. Yeah? And this has to do also with integration of renewable energies. Think about solar or photovoltaic, uh, wind power and, um, of course, you would like to manage your, your energy consumption, depending on availability of, of green energy, you would like to operate uh, dedicated loads, or you would like to switch off loads if it's not available at the moment. Or you could think about any storage solution. What does it mean? If you have renewable energy, uh, more and more solutions are coming up with, with batteries in the building to store these green energy uh, to be able to consume it later on. Yeah, if there's no green energy available anymore. So all these things are possible nowadays already. And to do this, you need metering, maybe up down or down to the surface, uh, to the individual circuit as well. Or another topic you find sometimes, um, depending on your contract with your energy supplier, you might have different tariffs. Means you pay for your energy, depending on the daytime, uh, different money, so a different amount of money you have to pay. Of course, it's then your target to use as much energy as possible during the time where you pay only less money. So also here kind of management necessary and can be done with a solution. Yeah, and to see your picture, it's from our research center in, in Switzerland. Uh, you see here the integration of KNX in a kind of smart grid, a local smart grid maybe. So we have KNX for different functions, but also for, for metering, of course, to detect the loads and connected to a superior smart grid, which has to do with, with green energy, photovoltaic, with storage solution like battery, 
maybe also with um, electrical cars, yeah, which is also electric energy, of course. And um, yeah, to create a consistent solution, we need also here our part, smart meter. Furthermore, if we measure electrical values, we have always also classical electrical values like voltage of the network, like current per circuit or the frequency and even more available. And this could be used also for monitoring of your power network. Yeah? So um, you can detect any incorrect values. For example, if, if voltage is going down, that might be dangerous for some, some loads in your installation. And um, you would like to react on this or get at least some information. And uh, you can switch off all the circuits which are maybe harmed by this situation. Um, all these things are possible. Yeah. Yeah, some, some more pictures of solutions. This is now from our factory in Heidelberg, where we have also submetering, of course, um, available. You see here some ABB energy meters and also connected to our meter interface. I come to this later on. So it's uh, KNX connected here. And you see some different small distribution boards, two, three um, meters inside for dedicated loads, yeah, just for detecting the energy consumption in these areas. Yeah. yeah, if you talk about more about projects, um, where can you use these solutions? I think in, in many, many projects uh, is submetering, monitoring, or maybe load management a topic. Think about shopping malls, for example. Uh, we have um, a lot of shops. Um, here, sub-billing or sub-metering, of course, is a topic. Um, or exhibition halls, where you have uh, different exhibitions with different exhibitors and would like to allocate costs, of course, to these users as well via submetering. In the industry to monitor, um, yeah, any, any uh, um, yeah, production lines, for example, uh, which needs also electrical energy and, uh, or think about any, any camping areas um, where you have also yeah, changed other uh, different users all over the time, and maybe you would like to to uh, not only yeah to measure and also to to create subbilling for these users, which are only a few time or a few days there. All these things are possible. Oh. We just talked about uh, green energy, solar energy, for example, which produce energy. You would like to measure this as well, maybe. So that's also possible, of course. Um, our energy meters can also. Um, measure imported energy means generated energy, not only consumed energy. It's also possible. So there are a lot of projects, and we have seen over the last years an increasing number of, of components sold for this application. And so there is a real market for such solutions. Yeah, again, some, some projects. I have just shown you already another picture of this uh, ADB research center in Switzerland. You see here. And yeah, an, an overview of, of parts of the building where we have here meters uh, installed for submetering, maybe for, for uh, sub-billing as well. And uh, on the next page, you see here also an overview of these meters in the distribution board, these ABB meters you can see here. It's a former version, of the delta meters, uh, but you will see later on all the meters we have or we had in the past as well. Another interesting, very interesting project is here in, in, in South Africa. Uh, it's the Department of the Environmental Affairs. And um, it's a big building. It's an office building, very green building, let's say. So there are a lot of applications with KNX, um, starting from classical lighting control, constant light control, and, and presence detection, uh, air, uh, also room temperature control, room climate control but also energy measurement. And there are around 700 energy actuators integrated. I come to this product later on. Additionally, a lot of AB energy meters with KNX interfaces, and they really monitor down to the circuit everything yeah, to optimize the solution, but also to detect any unallowed loads. Yeah? For example, any, any electric heater plugged in, which is not allowed, uh, will, be, will be switched off in such a case, yeah? can be detected. Uh, due to the amount of power connected and uh, will be deactivated then. Um, it's a very new project, not completely finished up to now, but um, 
we would like to have in the future some more information about this project and I think we will get it more complex. That's a good reference project for this application. And finally, another project here in Germany. It's a university, um, a relatively big university in Göttingen and the northern part of Germany. And um, they have for the different yeah, departments, laboratories, whatever they have, also submetering um, created, um, connected to KX. It's also a KX project. And the topic here is cost allocation. So it's directly possible to, to send out billings then and um, yeah on top on this solution there is a yeah, processing and evaluation software uh, to handle all these things we will see later on it's, it's a topic of course not only measurement again is, is necessary you have to process to evaluate also these values okay let's come to our solutions now and this picture is quite good to give you an overview of our yeah, metering solutions stand alone, but also, and that's our main topic, of course, integrated into KNX. So we have here our ADB energy meters, the A and B series, oh, a lot of components available. Um, I will give you the next slides, a short overview. And these are the former version of the ADB meters, the delta or OD meters, um, not available anymore, but um, maybe still existing in a lot of projects and um, also, these components can connect it to our meter or KNX meter interface, ZSS 1.1, which allows to transfer not all, but most of the data out of this energy meter to KNX. And you see already uh, yeah, a display, whatever it means. So we have to visualize, to store, or to process this data, of course. So any software is necessary. So one meter, one interface, but I will explain both solutions a bit more detailed in the next slides. And, and furthermore, we have here also direct KNX components. Direct KNX component means we can connect this device directly to KNX and measure as well all the electrical values I have uh, discussed with you already. So from energy consumption to power, um, voltage, current, frequency, and so on. Yeah? But also here's some more detailed information later. Yeah? So let's have a small overview of the meters itself. We have in our ABB portfolio um, a lot of components, I can say. I give you a small overview only. We have so-called C series, the B series, and the most powerful one are the A series. Um, the C series, I have not shown in the former slide because this one is not connectable to KNX. There is no option to connect it to a KNX solution. Um, the way I will show in the next slides, but the B series and also the A series, and a lot of components are available, are able to do this. We have single phase and three phase devices, depending on your network situation or the load situation. We have components to connect directly to the circuit, but this is limited to the current. Uh, uh, up to 80 ampere can be connected directly. If you have higher current in your network, you need a transformer, either a current transformer for current, but maybe also a voltage transformer is also possible with the A-series devices. Yeah, some more features of these devices. Again, the C-series is a very simple device, small display only, uh, direct connection up to 40 ampere, uh, and one and three phase, not more. No? You see already some, some names, steel, steel, silver, platinum, and so on. I will come to this as well. It's a classification of these meters. There's different functions behind, but I will come to this. Yeah, the B-series, the next level, goes up to 65 ampere directly or via current transformer is an option here. And it has an inbuilt communication, some options in this regard. I will show you later on as well. And for us important, infrared communication, because this we need to connect these devices to our KNX meter interface. Not available with C series, but with B series. And the A series, the most powerful one, direct connection up to 80 ampere. You can use also current transformer if necessary, but also voltage transformer if you have a high voltage in your network. It's possible. Um, 
also here in build communication, whatever it means, I come to this and also this IR communication necessary for Kinex connection. So display is here a bit more yeah, powerful, high resolution display. Um, not only a display is on the component, also a small keypad. It's for parameterization of the meter part. So it's directly done here at the meter uh, in a very user-friendly way, I can promise you. And um, here it's a bit more powerful and more detailed uh, compared with the base P series. Yeah, and these uh, versions from steel to platinum, I would like to explain a bit in this next slide here. Um, C, B, and A series. Uh, the C series only in steel version available. You can measure active energy with class one. Class one means 1% 1 failure of the measured value. Um, okay, also some instrument values like voltage current, but not more. Uh, the B series goes up to version silver. And if you have a look here for bronze, silver, and so on, you get additional features, additional functions. So the bronze version already can measure in both directions, not only consumed energy, but also produced energy. Think about photovoltaic, for example. Yeah? Additionally, also the reactive energy, not only active. And so on. So silver, gold, platinum, even more functions on top. Up to here, very, let me say, um, yeah, powerful uh, functions like harmonics. So you can detect here the quality of your network, let's, let's say. Um, you have also values from the past available, any load profiles from the past. Uh, so um, all these things here are available. Um, be careful, not all these information are available on KNX, but I come to this as well later on. Uh, it's important what we have on KNX available via our uh, meter interface and what is not. So I can say right now here, some values available in the meter itself are not possible to to link or to, to transfer to, to KNX at the moment. So you can choose out of the series which version you would like to have and then you have your component. So a lot of different devices are available. Yeah. So let's summarize the main uh, important features here, um, which also is uh, important to know if you compare our meters with, with competitor devices on the market. Um, this is really high class uh, meters we, uh, we have. Um, yeah, starting with a high accuracy um, up to or down to class uh, 0.5 is available, means half a percent maximum failure in the measurement. Yeah. Wide voltage input range from very low voltage up to high voltage. Okay, with the A series also we are a voltage transformer uh, as an option. Um, wide temperature range. So it runs from minus 40 to plus 70 degrees each meter. So in, in very, let me say, um, rough an environment regarding temperature, you don't need any, uh, any climatization or whatever and uh, can run this component directly. High measurement dynamics, what does it mean? We can measure very low and also very high maximum currents. Yeah? So um, gives you also a higher performance in the meter compared with some other components on the market. I mentioned already this, this display, which makes it very easy to configure uh, this device. Uh, and the A series is a very high resolution uh, display also in, uh, installed or inserted. Yeah, and furthermore, this built-in communication, what does it mean? First of all, infrared we need for our KNX uh, interface, but there are some other options as built-in communication interfaces, like MBUS, metering bus, so-called. Modbus is also, in, in some region countries, a popular uh, yeah, bus for, for maybe more for, for industrial automation. And the EQ bus is an ABB internal, let me say, protocol. Um, but we see later on also a solution with this MBUS, so, uh, for example. Yeah, classification or verification approval, let's say, is also important. Um, we have here this MID standard. It stands for Measuring Instruments Directive from the European Union, let's say. Uh, it's a classification of, of meters. And EIC, it's an international verification of meters. Um, you have to have this uh, approval for your meters, otherwise you are not allowed to do any, any billing. Yeah? And our ABB meters are able or are, are, are um, offering these classifications. It's, it's part of the solution. Um, 
the meter is running 24 hours a day normally, so measuring all the time. So the own power consumption should be as less as possible. And you see here, we have in the voltage part, measurement, measuring of voltage, uh, 0.8 watt only per, per phase in the, uh, for current, even less. So in total, maybe around one watt only, which is a very good value. And uh, also maybe absolutely different from competitive devices uh, on the market. Yeah, and then I mentioned in these steel to platinum um, uh, versions already some, some special features like that different terrors can be activated uh, if you have the right meter load profiles, uh, also measured loads in, in the past can be stored there. Um, any, any harmonics uh, could be measured if it's uh, not a very, let me say, uh, uh, perfect network you have, and um, you have the outputs you can program partly. Yeah? For example, an input could be used also to connect any any other meter with a pulse output. Yeah? Uh, can be integrated in such a meter. So as, there's some options um, depending on the meter you can can find here. So let's summarize. Very good and powerful meters we have in our ABB range. But now let's come to the connection to KNX. <laughs> And um, here we have our meter interface. I've shown you already in one of the former slides. Um, very simple device, KNX connection, some LEDs, and here on the right, infrared communication. Two eyes to communicate via infrared. Uh, so and here you can connect. I'll show you on the next slide how to do. Different ABB meters, the actual ones, A and B series we have right now, but also the former phased out components, uh, the delta and audio meters. Yeah. All these devices have also an infrared communication integrated on the left side. And how to do this? I install my meter. It's a DIN rail device. You see here still yeah, the former, the delta version, but it's in principle the same with the actual components. On the left, you install our KNX meter interface, ZSS, directly next to each other. And then via infrared, they're able to communicate, to exchange data, to receive commands from KNX maybe. And an IR communication is automatically established if you uh, apply the voltage, so you don't have to do anything. The only thing you have to do, and I come to this, we have to adjust in the ETS, because it's a KNX device here, some parameters which complies with a connected um, energy meter. That's important. So there is no automatic detection of the dedicated uh, meter because there are a lot of different meters available. The type of meter A, B, or a delta meter is possible, but we have to adjust here some parameters. I will come to this a bit later as well. But regarding installation, it's first of all very easy, very simple. Yeah some information of this product here. It's a small component, two modules. More or less interesting are only the LEDs here. We have three LEDs, arrow LED. Very important, I'll come to this as well later on. It's a kind of solution to, to uh, yeah, overcome the situation that here is that the blinking LED comes up sometimes. But first of all, it can be completely on. What does it mean? Any communication error means you have no IR communication between your meter and this meter interface. Maybe it's not directly connected. Maybe there's some 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 uh, some dirt here, so it's no optical communication possible. And this will be shown by a constantly lighted up LED. More often, it comes that LED is flashing here, the error LED. And this shows you wrong meter settings in the ETS. So you have done done something wrong. And um, you have to solve this, but how to do will be explained. Yeah, and then two LEDs blinking always if there's any communication between both components. Um, they can communicate in both directions. So not only values from the meter can be sent to KNX. No, we can also send a command. For example, you would like to change the tariff in a connected tariff meter via KNX. That's either possible. Then you send actively a telegram from KNX uh, via the interface to the meter. And it will be shown here with this LED. Yeah, which values are available on KNX? All the electrical values we discussed already a bit. 
Energy values, uh, active reactive energy is here available if you have tariff meter, also depending on the tariff. Yeah, you had uh, so both import means to consume energy, but also export if you produce any energy. Again, we are green, green energy like like uh, PV photovoltaic, uh, so it can be also measured. But depends on the meter type. Not all the meters are able to measure also produced energy, but we have an orange components around this. So energy consumption, of course, is available. Then all the other electrical values, you just mentioned already power, um, yeah, not only active, but also reactive and apparent power is available, voltage, current, frequency, and also some, some very special, let me say, um, information. Um, the power factor, for example, um, the power factor is relation between uh, yeah, um, the, the mean power and the peak power, yeah, let's say, and um, it's also kind of, um, yeah, indication of the, of the quality of your network. Oh, here's a quadrant, very special, let me say, information. Um, it gives you the feedback whether you have inductive or capacitive load and imported and exported energy flow. So the direction of the energy flow plus the type of load more capacitive, more inductive um, can be shown here. Yeah. And this information is also available in KNX, for example. What else do we have? If you have any current transformer or voltage transformer uh, connection necessary, the ratio of the transformer will be transferred also to KNX. Yeah? So it's part of the, the meter inside. And already mentioned, you can send also, for example, a telegram to change, uh, change the tariff from KNX. Um, very important information here. Um, already a bit mentioned, these optional values you find in some meters, like this load profile, previous values or harmonics or whatever, cannot be transferred to KNX via our interface. It's not possible. Um, this interface we have right now was also done for the former meters we had in ABB and our ABB range. And the, the the hardware is not prepared to, to, to transfer more data at the moment. So we have to give in that not all special values on these meters can be transferred to KNX. It can be shown on the display of the meter, of course, and but not transferred to KNX. And furthermore, the meter interface receives the values and can transfer to KNX, but it cannot store any values. So there is no memory inside to store values. This has to be done, of course, with uh, any superior visualization or any touch panel where you yeah, process and store this data. Yeah, and if you would like to send the values on the KNX bus, there are different options uh, via this meter interface. You can send cyclically or on request. Uh, power and, and, and instrumental values also in case of change. So maybe current change send more than one ampere. And you would like to send out the value to KNX. So you have different options. On request is a very good function. You decide at any time you would like to have all the values. And um, then you set a telegram via KNX to this device. And you receive from all the meters uh, the current, the actual values, uh, and can store it in any superior visualization, for example. And maybe you have a lot of meters connected. And what does it mean? You get a lot of telegrams back on the bus at more or less at the same time. And this can cause some, some traffic problems. And therefore, we have here parameters to delay sending of, 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 of feedback. Yeah? So you send requests on the same time to a lot of meters, but all the meters come with delay. And you have no overload in your, your communication. It's very simple. You assign a device number to, to your meter interface with a um, base delay time multiplied. You have the real sending delay, and those can be done then very individually. Yeah, um, if you have this transformer connected um, solution to your dedicated meters, we can decide here in the parameters um, which values shall be sent, secondary values or primary values. Yeah? And um, what does it mean? Send as secondary values the set transformer ratio, which is uh, an information from the meter, is not considered. Yeah? So the send power values 
whatever you have, must be multiplied with the transformer ratio, whatever you have, currents or voltage transformer. Can be done in the visualization, for example, uh, in order to, to get the actual value, of course. Yeah? If you say, no, no, I don't want this, I would like to calculate the value directly via the transformer ratio, um, then you can do this. You would like to have the primary values and um, the real actual value in the, the load uh, you would like to, to, to observe will be sent then on the KNX bus. And there's some a bit confusion. What do we have normally? Normally we have four byte communication objects for all these values we have, current and, and voltage and power and kilowatt hours as well. If you have the primary values necessary, we go over to an eight byte communication object. What does it mean? We can, um, yeah, process very high or big values. This is eight byte communication objects. And that might happen in an installation where you have high current, high voltage connected to the meter via a transformer. So a lot of um, or very high numbers of, of kilowatt hours or watt hours, you measure watt hours in our case, it can uh, appear and um, maybe the four byte communication object is then not big enough anymore. That's the reason why we use here the eight byte, eight byte um, communication object. So all visualization softwares should be able to, to process this. Um, Though it's not a very, let me say, uh, common communication object, but it's an official data point in the ETS or KNX world, and uh, of course, then also available. Yeah, uh, finally, here um, some communication objects. Not everybody knows. Uh, it's not only values we can send on the uh, on the KNX bus. We have also some some status information. Yeah? For example, we have here error report or one bit communication object to give you a kind of collective message, anything is wrong in your meter, huh? whatever it means. We have later on some more details or the wrong meter type is parameterized. You get a telegram here with a one bit value one and you know exactly, okay, if there are one bit one value one is coming back, something is wrong with this parameterization. Or you would like to know in a very weak network, how often the power fails, breakdown of the um, yeah, power. Um, we can count this here and can send the value on the bus via this one byte communication object. Yeah. So uh, in some regions, it's interesting and we don't need any, any other uh, components to do this. Yeah. Um, I just mentioned already this um, status byte. So the status byte is a more detailed information about any status and it's an eight bit or one byte communication object and each bit represents any information. Yeah? So if you read out the value, you can this uh, indication of the eight bits, which is easily possible with any calculator you have nowadays, also windows available, you can check, okay, uh, bit number one is one, is value one means this fault, which is described here is active. Oh, no voltage or under voltage. Uh, or over voltage, one of the three phases maybe. Uh, you have a three fold uh, meter or three phase meter. And so it's easy to detect any wrong situation. So it's part of the ZSS uh, KNX software. Yeah, and um, remember uh, when I explained the LED on the component itself, this error LED can blink sometimes. So flashing is, appears sometimes. What does it mean? wrong parameterization in the ETS. So connected meter does not comply with a parameterization um, in the ETS. So very often our hotline gets a feedback, okay, data are coming, to the comp uh, coming from the component to KNX. Everything is in principle working, but LED is blinking and uh, the user is confused. And the reason is, as, as mentioned, this wrong parameterization. And to make it easier for you, we have such a quick guide now. Parameter settings depending on meter type. So it's a PDF file um, we have available for you, which gives you yeah, information what to, to adjust depending on your uh, meter type. And allow me to show this to you. And uh, I'll just share with you my, my desktop and to show you the PDF file, just a moment. So this is a PDF. 
you will find on the internet, I showed to you. And um, if you go into this PDF file, you get in the second page a small explanation exactly about this problem uh, I've just explained. Yeah? This is red LED. So what is the solution? You say, okay, I know my meter I have connected. It's maybe from the A series, you click on this and you should know the meter type as well. And the version steel to platinum is available. Yeah. Okay, that's the version I have. And then you see directly uh, the parameters you have to adjust yeah, to have a correct adjustment. Huh? Because there are a lot of different meters available and of course here also a lot of, of different uh, parameters. And it's, it's beginning not very easy to, to assign or to, to parameterize it correctly. Um, we help you on this matter. So if you find, find what you need, then I think everything is clear. The same for B-series. There are some less components available at the same principle. Okay. okay. Yeah, where do you find? Um, ah, before I come to this, here you see the actual ETS application is at the moment 3.4a, which includes also the B-series. B includes also the B-series, which was not available before in different language nowadays available. Yeah, and where do you find this PDF file? I've just shown to you on our homepage, of course, um, abv.com slash knx. You go to the component here, to the meter interface, and here you find this file in German and English language, and uh, then you have the same I have just shown to you. Very simple, but very useful, I think. Yeah, so let's summarize the meter interface. Um, very important, and this is also one big argument. It's quick and easy installed, very simple. Yeah? Okay, we have to give in, we need one meter interface for each meter. Well, that's the situation here. Uh, but thanks to this IR connection, it's very simple in connection. Yeah? We can connect all our meters, except the C-series, automatic assembling of IR communication already mentioned, and uh, most of the values are available. Yeah? which you have in the meters itself. So it's perfect for subsequent installation, yeah, for submetering. Though I will show, I show at the end of my webinar also uh, other possible solution to integrate meters of call in a, in a complete building automation solution with KMX. Yeah, now let's come to our yeah, direct KNX uh, measuring devices, let's say the energy module. EMS 361 and the energy actuator, SES 361, components with three channels. Yeah, you see it also here, this is component which has also relays integrated. So three, yeah, circuits, direct circuits can be connected up to 20 ampere current. Yeah. Um, no current or voltage transformer solutions can be integrated, it's for the circuit itself. Yeah, if you have high current, you have to use the energy meter with the meter interface, but for measuring directly in the circuit, perfect devices. The energy module is only measuring. The energy actuator is also switching the circuit. So like a switch actuator. You can also say it's a very powerful switch actuator with energy measurement. Yeah, I give you some information about the features, of course, of these devices. Let's go to the connection diagram. First of all, um, you see here on the left, the energy actuator, very simple. You can use any phase going into the device via the relay back to the load three times. And don't forget, we need here, that's different from any switch actuator, also a connection of the neutral. If we do not connect the neutral, we cannot measure the voltage. And technically, such a device measures very precisely and very often voltage and current. Yeah. So over the period of, of uh, 50 hertz, 50 or 20 milliseconds, we can measure very often the value. So, and all other values we need later on, we can calculate out of this. But voltage is absolutely necessary. The same here in the energy module. Yeah. Sometimes, People ask, okay, I have one common neutral only here. What happens if I have to connect uh, earth leakage circuit breakup? Yeah. Situation is the following, the voltage going here into 
the device, the phase here in L1 in this case, neutral is connected here, means that we have a low but existing current going through the component itself. Yeah? So if I integrate my RCD directly here in the phase which is going directly into the device, I will measure not only the load current, but also the current going into the device itself, resulting in, in, a, in a tripping of the RCD because incoming and outgoing current is not the same anymore because partly going through the component. So it's very, very, very slow or very low this value. It will lead to, to tripping of this RCD. So how to overcome the situation? You see it here. You go with your face, first of all, in the device coming out and then you go into the RCD and the load and back to the neutral. So now you measure really only uh, incoming and outgoing current uh, of your load. And not more. So an option you should take into account if necessary. But let's come to the components a bit more detailed. Um, here an overview of all features. I will explain more detail in the next slides. Um, the only difference here between both devices is a missing switching capability in the energy module, uh, or switching here, and a bit different also in load control, I come to this, and, uh, but the rest is more or less the same. So measurement of all the values is uh, directly or really the same in most devices. Yeah, let's come to <clears throat> some detailed features here, details of the features. So if you talk about energy measurement, which is of course a part here as well, um, we have three channels in each device. We can measure, of course, per channel, the kilowatt hours, um, constantly all the time. So we measure uh, the energy consumption over years, maybe. Additionally, we have via software, so-called intermediate meter available. Intermediate meter is nothing else, but via software, a meter, you can start and stop, you can reset. Um, in other words, it, it allows you to, to measure maybe during a certain period, during the day only, or during each day, you have to know the energy consumption. After the day, you read out the value, reset to zero, and then you start to measure this intermediate meter uh, next day again. But you will never lose the total energy consumption because the main meter here per channel is always running and give you the value all the time. You cannot reset this um, main meter, let's say. Yeah, the same for all three channels or for all three channels together also. So there's a total meter both for um, intermediate and, and complete metering uh, is available. So if you talk about the intermediate meter, how to start and stop this, um, via KNX, we can send telegrams, uh, as you know, so I can start anytime. Um, we have one bit telegram, the intermediate meter, can be also done via time function, for example. Yeah. And as well, you can stop via one bit telegram or at a dedicated time, you would like to, to stop the meter or you have reached any, any, any kilowatt hour limit. So if you have reached 1000 kilowatt hours, you would like to stop metering. Maybe you would like to cut off the power as well with the energy actuator, not a problem. Yeah? Or you would like to measure only during a certain period, also adjustable here. Yeah? So you're very flexible to use this intermediate meter for, for sub-metering during a certain time only, a certain period. The software is prepared for this. Furthermore, we have so-called thresholds or limits uh, available in the software. Um, what does it mean for all the values, including these, these instrumental values or power values? Uh, we have here uh, uh, two thresholds available. What does it mean? Um, you can program a threshold. If you overshoot or undershoot this threshold, you can send a telegram on the bus maybe as an information only, maybe to, to uh, an alarm, or maybe to, to switch off the load behind as well. You know? So it's absolutely possible to do this. Um, with the energy actuator um, itself, because it's integrated switch actuator with the energy module, possible if you have an additional actuator, of course, behind which you have more, you know, whatever it means. Yeah, it gives you also some options here. These features you do not have in, in any meter, and uh, the meter interface, that is S. Yeah? It's only measurement, but here we have also some, some more intelligence available. But also please here keep in mind, 
Also here, the energy actuator and energy module cannot store any values. Yeah, it's not possible. Um, so we can read out all the time the value at, uh, at any time the actual values, but uh, we have to send it then again to our visualization or whatever we have to store and, and, and display the values. Um, another software feature um, named load control. What does it mean? Um, load control means I would like to avoid any overshooting of my total load in my building huh? by switching off loads before I reach this limit. Huh? And allow me to jump directly to the next slide. I can explain it even better here. What is possible? If we use our energy actuator for measurement of all connected loads in the building, I know then the actual power of each circuit. These values can be sent on the bus from each channel and can be sent to a master. A master is nothing else but also an energy actuator or energy module with the um, right software only. So we can program the load control master solution in any channel of our uh, energy actuator or uh, energy module. And the master receives all the actual power values from all the connected circuits, sums it up to a total value and the master, I've programmed a limit. And if you approaching this limit, the master will send out on the bus, switch off telegrams to dedicated circuits of the yeah, linked energy actuators in order to switch off and to reduce uh, actual power in the total building. Always to avoid any, any uh, um, any load peak, yeah? which might maybe cost money or is not available at all because you have a power limit in your installation. And if you come to this limit, power will be cut off completely. Yeah? And before you come to the situation, it's even better to manage this with this load control solution. Yeah, and that's a solution we have inside the software, uh, the KNX software, ETS software of these devices, uh, these devices, and you can use it. In some project countries, we see the situation and this functionality is coming from the market, from the feedback of our customers who asked for such solutions in, in principle in switch actuators at that time. Yeah. yeah, how many circuits can be connected up to 30? So 10 of these energy actuators with in total 30 circuits can be connected to the solution. And there's another feature. You can assign priorities to each of your 30 channels because when you have to switch off something, um, with which circuit you will start. That's, yeah, of course, it's important to, to, uh, to think about and you can assign priorities. You can say, okay, I start with the least important circuits first of all, of course, which will be switched off at the beginning if I reach this power limit. If it's not enough, then of course I can uh, go to the next level, to next priority and I switch off the next uh, circuits if necessary. Yeah? Of course, if the power is going down, by itself and you undershoot another limit, you can switch on again as well. Yeah? So not only switching off, but also switching on as possible. So it's, it's not load management, load management is a bit more in, in, in performance, but we call it load control and um, gives you in some, some projects and countries some options as the solution. Yeah, uh, finally here, some technical data already mentioned, we can measure up to 20 ampere starting from 25 milliampere, only direct connection possible, no transformer, either via voltage, 230 volt. So we go up to 4.6 kilowatts, we can measure in power. Huh? Yeah, voltage and frequency is something I think we have all over the world, so not a problem. Accuracy shown here, not bad. Huh? So we are in a very good range, let's say it's not, it's a real measurement. So it's not only an estimation of the value. Um, the only thing you have to know here is um, yeah, power or energy consumption in a lower range. Uh, we have a higher uh, yeah, failure, but you see a current and voltage is very good values. Yeah? So uh, for this application, submetering or monitoring of circuits, um, it's a quite good solution. Yeah, um, I hope everybody of you knows our IBAS tool, the service tool we have. 
um, yeah, for, for different components available to, to make life easier for those who have to, to commission um, KNX, who have to test uh, the solution uh, on the site. Um, this IBAS tool is a service tool. You can get connection to different devices and also to this energy actuator energy module. Well, what for? So you get connection, you have a physical address to your device and you can display the measured values directly here in this IBAS tool. So you need nothing else, no ETS with this recording of the traffic or any, any visualization, you can directly have a look what is measured. It's not a 24 hour visualization, of course, it's a connection to a, one device at the same time only, just for, for checking during the commissioning phase. Yeah, and you see here one first screenshot. Um, you can show here, of course, uh, energy consumption per channel or the total value, plus uh, if you have and use an intermediate meter measurement, you can start and stop here as well. If you have energy actuator connected, you can switch on and off the three circuits as well on the upper right side, shown here these buttons. Yeah. Furthermore, you have all the other electrical values per channel available, including the frequency. Yeah. So current and, and power and so on, voltage. And finally, some, some status information out of the devices. Oh. Um, yeah, for example, here, active power negative, uh, uh, or any frequency error, components not, not running anymore. Um, things like this are also available here. So it's a simple option here to, to, to check the situation with your connected devices. Good. What else do we have for you? Um, I've said in the beginning that you have also kind of software solution available for you just to, to display all the measured values. And we have here a solution for the energy actuator energy module. It's a, a software solution based on a, on a visualization software on the market, which allows you to visualize in a more professional way now the values but not only to visualize, but also to store the values. Yeah? You see here, energy values can be stored in a CSV file and can be to, um, transferred to Excel, for example, to display, etc., or to store, etc. And what do we have here? On the next slide, you will see it. Um, yeah, it's a software solution based on the iSpare visualization. Um, it's not ABB uh, software, but kind of, of third-party product of a partner company. Um, it's a quite good uh, visualization software for KNX project. And together with this company, we have created a, a project in principle to, to visualize up to 12 energy actuators or energy modules. And you see here some screenshots. So if you have a look to one energy actuator, you see here all the values. A bit similar to the IBAS tool, but you have also a graphical part here showing measured values in a bear graph, for example, background for a line graph here. So we can look also in terms of the history, what has been uh, consumed or whatever. Yeah. So this is available and um, the CD um, you need for this contains a, um, yeah, a, the visualization project, but also the ETS project. Yeah, you need, of course, uh, to be to, to, to download it into the component. And then you can start the software and, and visualize directly without any additional work. Yeah. If you want, of course, you can extend this visualization software as well, but then you, then you need an official license for the software. Um, due to license reasons, I cannot, we cannot send it directly to you via our feedback emails of these files. Uh, it's not possible. It's available as a piece of hardware, as a CD. And, um, but it can be ordered here in Heidelberg. Our colleagues should know this. I have written down here these um, order codes. German and English version, version is available. So it's, it's on stock here and in Germany and can be ordered and distributed to the market, of course, free of charge. Okay, so yeah, before I come to the end, two other slides left. Um, remember also at the beginning of my webinar when I was talking about not only electrical metering or yeah, electrical value metering, but also other um, yeah, values I would like to, to measure in a building. If you see here, for example, a water meter, water is also necessary in a building. 
or BTU meter. BTU meter are measuring in principle um, this thermal energy in any fluid, any water for heating, cooling, for example, or you have any heating system based on gas. So you would like to integrate a measurement of these uh, um, information or data also. How to do this? First of all, these meters are normally not KNX meters, though there are also solutions on the market, but at least not from ABB. But all these meters normally have a pulse output. A pulse output, pulse signals proportional to the measured values of these meters. And what do we have to do? We have to count only these pulses. And how to do? We can do it with our binary inputs. These components, both these Dean Ray device, BES, but also the USU, the universal interface, are prepared. Uh, we have software for this solution, means we have a so called counter application inside, yeah, which allows you to count these pulses. And then indirectly also this yeah, consumed, uh, yeah, whatever it means, the consumption, whatever it means, water, gas, and so on. Yeah. So it's a very powerful part in this software. Uh, in the ETS software. Um, a lot of things can be adjusted here. Uh, you should know that we can count up to five hertz maximum, not more. And the pulse coming out here, this one pulse, should be minimum 50 milliseconds. Otherwise, we cannot count it correctly. Yeah? So another option you might have um, or might, might need. Uh, the only thing you have to know and keep in your mind as well, so in case of any bus voltage failure, the bus is not working, KNX bus is not working, um, we will not count anymore, of course. No? Okay, the meter itself will have this value all the time, but we cannot count anymore, but at least the, the last value will be stored inside the memory, so in case of power failure or bus voltage failure, the last value will be still available. Okay. But in some projects, we use such a solution as well. And finally, also mentioned already a bit, uh, ZSS, our KNX meter interface, is one option to connect all our meter interfaces. Yeah? Um, but in some cases, we have another solution. Example here, you say, okay, I have not only ABB energy meters, maybe I have other meters. I have other meters for gas, water, and so on. Not directly connectable to KNX, but I would like to integrate it to one common, let me say, uh, yeah, uh, protocol, and for example, you can use the MBUS. MBUS is a protocol, metering bus, so-called, which is available in, in some of our ABB meters, yeah? plus for other type of meters as well. So we collect all the data on the MBUS. Via MBUS master, you can transfer to, yeah, a visualization. Yeah? Um, the same we can do with our KNX solution, which is another part of our solution, of course, our total solution. And on top here, on this visualization software, you, you link everything. There are different solutions on the market. You see here, example, this, this OPC technology, it's kind of software translation between different protocols. And then everything will be linked here and, and visualized and processed, whatever. Also an option. Uh, and um, for example, here with MBUS, integrated MBUS interface we have, and we collect all the data, data here. Okay. Good. Yeah, I've almost reached the end of my webinar. Um, before I come to some questions you have given to me already. Um, what else do we have on our homepage, abb.com slash knx? We have also an e-learning module for the energy actuator at least. Um, available, have a look. It's also kind of commented presentation and you can listen to us or to, to uh, this webinar. Uh, sorry, this is e-learning module. And uh, yeah, for the energy actuator available. What else is around metering and KNX? If you go to the homepage of the KNX organization, knx.org, you will find also an interesting document called Smart Metering with KNX. Um, yeah, what do you find there? What will you find there? Some solutions and also products around metering. Yeah, not only ABB products, of course, there are some other products. Uh, also on the market, uh, quite good, quite well done. And yeah, you can download this PDF file from the KNX homepage, um, available in different languages. I've given you here the, uh, the link to the English uh, version, but have a look. You will find it on the homepage under downloads. 
yeah, and also on the KNX homepage, uh, there are some uh, some further webinars now, now available. Uh, have a look. Um, so they are also offering webinars nowadays. And um, for example, the ETS five could be interesting for some of you. Just launched, and they have continuously also webinars about ETS five to give you some information. But some more uh, webinars are available. Have a look on the homepage, knx.org. A preview to our next webinar. Um, security panel GMA rate one. So our components, some of you might know already a bit from, for example, the light and building fair in spring of this year. So we will launch this product now next week. It's coming now really. And uh, so we will have our next webinar beginning of December around this topic. This can be only a small introduction to this very powerful solution. And uh, but I think it's worth to participate uh, next time. And yeah, you are invited, of course, as well, later on in the next days or uh, one week before, and then you can attend this webinar if you want. Okay, then I would say thank you to you that you have listened yeah, a bit more than one hour to me. Um, yeah, wait for our feedback email where you get all the information again, uh, presentation plus uh, the recorded file and the feedback regarding the question. Thank you for participating. See you next time. Bye-bye from Heidelberg. Ciao.